Um, I'm Katia Bozdan, an AFL teacher, and at the moment, currently, I'm working as a project coordinator in Ari Private Middle School. Uh, today, uh, our grade 8 students, Eda and Veran, uh, they will be presenting with me. Hello, girls. Hi, I'm Eda. Hi, I'm Bedan. Thank you. Uh, this presentation focuses on how linguistic and international networks in post-pandemic 2020-2023 develop students' linguistic competence and digital competences in line with SDG 3, 4, and 17. Here is a quick overview on the objectives we will be talking about. Uh, we will talk about the learning profile, and I think the, the methods and the mentoring collaborations and how we can engage students actively at present, uh, the phases of developing linguistic confidence and sustainability in education and its benefits. Uh, as you may assume, lots of teachers, uh, including myself, uh, we have experienced a project-based approach as an example of how effectively a teacher can engage learners of different ages and abilities and the process of learning a foreign language with them being active. And that means innovative, um, inclusive, diverse, accessible, and sustainable. Uh, the fact that students acquire linguistic skills of effective communication but through uh, collaboration and with their peers is undeniable. However, a lot of teachers there are share the opinion that they actually underestimate the value of international collaboration, considering a, a time-consuming workload and potential disbenefit for students with immediate educational objectives and goals. Our, on your screen now, you can see an image of our class, classroom setting, and it's a discussion about sustainability problems in the city of Ankara, where our school community is located. It's a mixed stability classroom, um, mostly the students aged 13, and his level of English is that of B1+, according to CFR frame. Uh, it's assumed that uh, any student in this class can understand the main points of clear standard speech on familiar matters regularly are uh, encountered in work, in school, and leisure, yeah, that they can understand the main points of uh, many radio and TV programs on current affairs or topics of personal or professional interest when the delivery is relatively slow and clear. Uh, Actually, such classes undergo regular national tests on English grammar and vocabulary and speaking sessions with are uh, based on project learning and project based learning and uh, SDG. However, not every student initiates to take active participation in class discussions and our teachers observations that proved are uh, the fact that the more group research and in-class discussions are being run at the moment with specific classes, the more confidently students perform in spoken and later on written English. So let me give you some more examples. Within 2020, 2023 academic years, we have had a chance to connect with many international school communities in Europe, uh, United States, Asia, and forest and established the gold network as a global ownership of learning and development that was the real the pre-pandemic pandemic and post-pandemic period of learning and we wanted to support our students academic social emotional learning and development through international collaborations leaving responsibility to the learners um, while working on uh, asd and sdgs in particular we assume and at present the students are required to communicate to fluent and independent decision makers. And the first network establishing among uh, gold stakeholders was the online uh, gold network and the magazine. Uh, we are now on the screen, you see the compilation of the four issues. There are currently, they were published are uh, in, um, in the time of uh, last year, June, May and June, and the link will be shared at the end of the presentation, but currently, we have finished the fifth edition of the magazine. I want to say that probably uh, you might uh, inquire what is the easiest way and what's the shortcut. Um, let me set an example of um, how you can develop students' linguistic confidence in classes of young learners and very young learners and teens. Uh, one of the methods how we can do that is establishing 
um, cultural awareness of the mother tongue and the need of learning a foreign language, or in our case, English, as a tool of effective communication. Mm, now on the screen, you can see an image of UN World Mother Tongue Day celebrations in our school community, which was taken at the height of the pandemic. And most of the collaborations led by Zoom at that time was uh, they were restricted to short-term objectives and cultural pan uh, palette exchange and mystery zooms. So the evidence of how beneficial are actually these in-class uh, applications they were in are clear. The students uh, they like a mystery of seeing students overseas, and they can ask and respond to simple, uh, very clear online instructions and comments. Uh, this gives them uh, immediate confidence in completing C or uh, simple and achievable tasks but uh, actually if you ask me this is not what we want global citizens to be uh, equipped with in terms of linguistic readiness um, the big question is do you uh, and do we really know our, our students needs uh, so um, the methods um, and what kind of methodology we should follow uh, now on the screen you can see some of them our online our questionnaire, our, um, we applied to 70 students aged 10, 11, and 13, 14, grade 5 and grade 8, respectively. And they were asked to do a questionnaire about their opinion of their English competence and readiness to improve their language skills in the hybrid learning settings. Uh, the individual interviews and informal talks, the students, they were arranged mostly in pairs or groups to have informal talks and interviews with their English and native teachers weekly for a period of four months. And the content of the talk, talks and interviews uh, was based on students' interest and weekly curriculum to cover. Um, I should say that the rubric of students' self-assessment was created in alliance with CFR levels and that of their language proficiency and CFR descriptors. So analyzed data actually proved that uh, students' self-esteem in the first place has been raised and resulting in positive attitudes towards students' participation in online lessons and self-study. Mm, but what about parental involvement? Students, they were given achievable and collaborative tasks to be completed by engaging their family members. Mm, the tasks, they were um, mostly focused on student-generated cognitive dialects and interviews to be done with family members. Or um, the students, um, if we talk about young learners or middle school, um, they had a choice to pro produce their own video or audio recording. And all the files, they were kept in um, e-portfolio, my dossier file. So uh, students kept my video diary in which they described their feelings uh, before, while, and after completing a family task. And as a result, the family stated that a substantial raise in students' emotional well-being, uh, which is so much important, and can-do attitude toward English learning. If we talk about um, self-assessment and can-do statements, um, the grids, self-assessment grids and rubrics, they have been developed uh, so that we can evaluate actual students' attitudes and, and study habits, because they're the challenging times and the level, levels of emotional uh, self-esteem in response to online applications and collaborative um, achievements that was crucial. So the CANDO statements were applied to students after online lessons and after they have completed home tasks. Um, teachers observed students during online applications using breakout rooms, which included scenarios, problem solving, and group discussions at the time. Um, as I have just mentioned, all students' works, they were compiled in their e-portfolio, my dossier file, um, and the development of the students' self-study skills, if you, let me say, digital literacy and emotional well-being, um, all this development uh, it was traced through e-portfolio as a tool of digital evidence of learning. Um, the next question that might come into your mind, so uh, what's next? So, and what should the teacher do next uh, when the class is happy and the teacher is even more satisfied? Uh, however, um, you know, the next step in nourishing language skills is 
setting a more challenging task for students and actually for the teachers as mentors. So next time is not just introducing your own culture and answering the questions um, in a Zoom setting, but uh, teachers should set a bar higher each and other time and challenging the students and themselves and new learning environments. Uh, since as growing minds, young learners and teenagers, they inquire a lot, they question us. And our students, they wanted to do more Skypes and Zooms, but they also want to do something different in each and other time. So uh, the gold network and collaborative um, applications within that helped us reach out to more international schools and communities um, worldwide. And two of which we are, are going to describe now in brief, the iEARN and the Global Collab Network. Uh, I'm an iEARN network uh, educating Turkey and the project facilitator of Do Good uh, Safe Food project at the same time. So for those who are new to iEARN, I'd love to share briefly about the work that we do. Um, the International Education and Resource Network iEARN is a robust K-12 educational network that enables students, teachers, and students all around the world to connect online and collaborate on projects that tie classrooms learning with real world issues, um, using the English as an effective tool of communication that could be Spanish or any other languages. Um, I should say that our international network has grown exponentially since our 1988, and the ability um, to connect online and collaborate. So given an example, last project year, we connected over 2000 teachers and almost 4,000 students from all um, over the world and 115 countries in global projects. And there are approximately 100 projects in iEARN at the moment. And these projects, they're designed and facilitated by teachers and students uh, to fit their curriculum and classroom needs and schedules. Mm, these iEARN projects, they're interdisciplinary and connect learners across uh, different age groups. As in our example, in the Do Good Safe Food project, the students are aged mainly 12 and 14, but they're uh, early learners. They also participated in some in-class and online activities. Um, this is actually connection learners across different age groups and primarily K-12 uh, and different subject areas, including creative and language arts, uh, social sciences and STEM. Participants select, um, they select an online project and look at how they can integrate uh, the project into their classroom. So um, teachers and students, they connect with uh, global peers in online forum spaces uh, to meet one another and collaborate on the project. The timing is uh, flexible. It could be the academic year of any institution, or you can agree on the timeline within the project. And the language of communication I've just mentioned is English and mainly English and probably other European uh, languages would help, which creates advantages learning environment for non-native speakers. Um, in addition to connecting students learning uh, with local issues and meeting specific curriculum needs, every project proposed by teachers and students in iEARN has to answer the question, uh, how will this project improve the quality of life on the planet? And this vision and purpose is actually the glue that holds all the iron projects together, enabling participants to become uh, global citizens who make a difference by collaborating with their peers around the world. Uh, given an example, in 2015, uh, iron mobilized its global network to ensure that uh, iron project aligned with at least one arm of the world's new 17 sustainable goals and uh, a set of targets relating to future international development. Um, I should say that uh, now, uh, if you have a look at the screen again, this is only one of the examples of the projects, which are multilingual, as I've just mentioned. And uh, through this collective learning and action, uh, youth are making a difference through our own projects that meet the goals of SDGs, such as uh, ending poverty, protecting the planet, and ensuring prosperity for all. We will be sharing the link to Iron Project uh, at the end of the presentation. Our, the next point which we would like to uh, bring your attention is that each year, 
we organized our own virtual project exhibition. Um, this year, the exhibition took place on May 15th, 2023, and was co-hosted by students from our school, and I in Beran, who are with me now today. And having this wonderful opportunity, I would like to ask uh, the girls about their learning journey to have an interview online. Uh, Bena, uh, could you please uh, let us know about your experience with iEARN? I joined iEARN last year when I was in grade seven and we were taking part in the World Water Project. I was an active member of the project and we hosted regular virtual meetings with project partners in English and Spanish. So if, um, if I ask, what has changed about your foreign language skills if you compare previous years, last year, and where you stand now? I've always been curious about learning new things, and the IO network has given me such an opportunity. Each year, we can choose which project to work on, and it's our decision what actions to take and implement in practice. On May 25th, 2023, we co-hosted the iEARN Virtual Project Exhibition. This was my first experience as a presenter. However, even if I felt a bit nervous before the event, the, the support of my mentors and Ella during the presentation made me feel better. We had one team from another country, which was supposed to present, but did not show up at the time allocated for them. So we had to make an instant decision and adjust the speech. Thankfully, that team solved their technical issues and did the presentation. So, uh, may I say that solving instant problems uh, using uh, English is also a part of our international community and collaborations, and you're good at that? We are working on it now. Thank you, Mera. Um, another student led network is the Global Collab Network, and students form teams in which each member has a real task. So it could be a writer, a blogger, a photographer, it could be a communicator, a project developer. And these tasks, they rotate regularly so that every student can master the skills. All learners are meet at project-based hubs to realize their potential as global citizens by sharing their solutions at national, international, local, or even global levels. Uh, students, they offer solutions to real life problems uh, using a foreign language as a tool for effective communication. So since students make collaborative decisions, their applications of the project-based activities, uh, they are flexible and concerning national and global agendas. Uh, the role of a teacher comprises the attributes of a language mentor who is well equipped with ESD methodology and promotes sustainable learning in alliance with SDGs. Mm, I would like now to uh, talk to Elam. Uh, she's also the ambassador of the Global Collab. Um, Elam, would you like to tell us about how it works? Our mission is to engage more teens and become a virtual space of collaborative learning about SCGs in English. The projects we do focus mainly on peace education and environmental education and are in alliance with UN Agenda 2030. We work on SDGs, discuss why they're important and how we can make them meaningful by not just sharing knowledge, but creating to learn. We create themes attractive to all ages of teens so they do not get bored, but learn about SDGs and Turkish culture at the same time. We share how we can learn by doing something creative, like short educational podcasts, blogs, videos, and cartoons for kids in English. Um, so, Ida, uh, what are the most, and um, probably, uh some of the most no, no, noticeable and uh, notable accomplishments of the hubs. Um, we produced video episodes to show compassion towards the earthquake in Turkey and Syria in February 2023, which were broadcasted by Turkish American TV. We are working on several English projects at the moment. One of the aspects of our hub activities is that we collaborate with other hubs in English and Spanish, which helps us develop our linguistic confidence to communicate openly and reach SDGs. Global Collab Network is an amazing place to share ideas and cultural diversity. Everyone here is talented and very nice to each other. Also, it is a good virtual space to develop our digital competences by making presentations, podcasts, and videos in English. We have learned how to make public presentations in English, write a petition letter to UN leaders, and run an online interview in English. 
This is what you can hardly learn from the course book. Um, I agree, Ella and Beran, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today. Some, some skills and life learning skills, the priority of the e English language teaching and learning at the second, uh, yes, a part of the presentation we'll be talking about. Um, how engaged every uh, learner in that. Thank you, girls. Um, so in putting that into practice, uh, when you engage every learner and make everybody's, uh, every learner's voice heard, um, how to make a learner um, feel comfortable about with uh, something that like foreign language skills. And this is um, actually phases of development linguistic competence and linguistic um, confidence at the same time. Uh, the phases of active engagement and inquiry, um, you can see on the screen now, they resonate with taking it global network uh, on which uh, youth can take an active part in self-expression using English. Uh, this is a platform on which students initiate and share their ideas and works and take part in conversation and contests. We have been taking part in several of them and the awards, they're meaningful, and uh, students and their educators, they're great, grateful to the achievements that the students uh, show. Um, we have conducted also an online survey on the impact of student-led networks on teens' uh, foreign language development. Mm, sure, there should be um, academic benefits that the participants of the network take advantage of, and being an AFL teacher, I should say that almost 90% of uh, students in our school, they take Cambridge Assessment English tests annually. And this year, as they are in the round, there are examples of that. Um, this year, 26 students in our grade eight, um, they decided and they taken the Cambridge First Certificate test and enrolled in the IB program for their higher school uh, education. Many more parents, actually, they have been recognizing the value of international collaboration in students' foreign language development. And um, in my example, and the recent previous example, that was for students' language portfolios. Um, this is what they say. I'm, I, I'm happy to share one of their feedbacks of our students, their parents, actually. The eagerness of how my daughter take part in student-led networks is amazing. So I see how self-organized and contentious become in English uh, and no longer have to remind her to plan and schedule events. And she does that independently. The amazing contributions of the students worldwide gives you um, inspirational ideas and um, promotes the further inquiry in their uh, learning process. But um, as a summary and the benefits, let's sum up uh, what we have learned and probably our uh, accumulation feedback would help you foresee some of the activities and the planning for the next coming educational year. Um, the two-year collection of um, global ownership of learning and development, the GOLD Network, an international online kids magazine, reflects actually the head, the hands and their heart approach meeting students' academic, social, emotional needs of self-development, uh, international cross-curricular collaborations. They include student-generated surveys, presentations, video interviews, digital exhibitions, and podcasts. And this study has accumulated summative evidence of students' self-study and learning habits during online, in-class setting, or hybrid. Uh, studies and the feedback given to students during interviews and informal talks resulting in bu building up a positive emotional environment and that was to encourage uh, lifelong learning and progress in academic motivation and I'm, I'm happy to say that students and their families they contributed to a great extent to in learning are uh, through fund generated and student generated tasks and projects um, the beneficial sides um, of learning a language and developing students' linguistic confidence through international networks, um, they were recognized by the teachers. So they observed that a positive change in students' attitude to online challenging and unexpected tasks, uh, which requires skills of digital competence and problem solving, 
skills. Uh, it's obvious that collaborative learning serves every child and every learner's goal and that the student, the learner, realizes their linguistic and the requisite for linguistic literacy, and not only liter literacy, but also accuracy and digital competence. Uh, students, they feel emotionally secure. And um, this comfort zone, if we're talking about good health and well-being and quality education, uh, the comfort zone uh, brings them to the progress throughout the creative process, and thus becoming more confident and they become more confident using a foreign language. Um, let's focus on the benefits for the teacher. Um, my personal opinion and the, the feedback is that it has become easier to manage the class regarding post-pandemic motivation, um, which was a question of long discussions in the teacher's world. And students, they have experienced now that English is a tool to achieve real goals. And they're real people and students and learners who speak the same language or who learn the same English uh, language as a foreign language. They have learned that live language by running online meetings, which is a lifelong skill at the same time. We have been collaborating with educators uh, from more than seven countries, and it's been uh, our third year in the collaborations. And throughout the journey, we have realized once again that every teacher has at the same time, deep responsibilities towards the students and the learners. And these are respecting um, their own culture and language, as well as feeling loyal to cultural diversity. Um, teachers, actually, they need to have a very broad vision. And the vision of the skills to be taught to students, uh, which um, latter would be able to use in the future. And this is not only the methodology, it's self-sustainability and global mindedness, uh, which are actually the core ones. Um, the challenges about um, working online and collaborating in the international uh, setting is uh, sometimes, frankly speaking, and talking the digital read readiness of the mindset. So this is what takes time to evolve. And as we continued to collaborate, uh, more innovative ideas were put into practice. So you also evolved as a mentor. And it became easier for us to foresee mutual outcomes. It does not matter actually how well equipped this or that educational institution is. So what matters is that the teacher's ability um, to apply background knowledge uh, using technological tools for effective uh, collaboration and communication where students are decision making. Um, you feel grateful to the whole, um, all the community and um, the stakeholders, well, the teachers, the parents who have been working with us. And um, actually, um, the feeling that what connecting us are, it is are the children and the learners. And as Elia and Beran, they kindly, um, they, they actually volunteer to take part in the presentation. And I'm sure that our... Um, something which might happen in their learning journey and the next uh, coming years in the high school because they're graduating from the middle school, um, sadly, on my personal behalf. So um, a lot of um, things and um, achievements have been celebrated and creating success nowadays. I think that means seeing your students be safe, uh, comfortable in any learning setting and uh, staying safe and healthy at the moment. Um, I should say that uh, we will proceed to the question answer session now, but before doing that, if you have any questions, just a reminder, please feel free to email. This is my email address. Uh, we will be sharing also uh, the references we've been mentioning throughout the presentation. Um, this is the links, and afterwards, when the PDF PDF file is shared, they will be embedded in the file. Um, before saying yes, waving goodbye, I would like to stop sharing my screen now and uh, ask Beran. Uh, I think that we have, is Alison, we also have um, a brief look at the Global Collab Network, actually, if time lets us. Our Beran, she was about, yes, she wanted to show us. Um, yes, around the site. 
So in the first place, um, shall we go to the hubs, which we've uh, been talking about that um, so I will give you a brief um, feedback on the hubs. Yes, we can scroll down. Um, the hubs are in alliance with SDGs. And um, one of the questions you might um, ask, how can we enroll our, it could be a class participation or individual students participation. We have in the blue word orientation here. Yes, and if you click on that, there is a form as the GHUB registra registration form. Um, you should consider the parental consent also, but uh, after the reg registration, you are um, free to join any hub of your preference. Okay, thank you, Beran. That's the form itself. It might take you a couple of minutes to fill it in. Um, another beauty of the um, system is um, the virtual room. So the hubs are numerous in number, but every hubster uh, can go to the virtual, I guess, room. Uh, this is the virtual space uh, which you can join if you're registered on the platform. It's digitally operated. It's actually navigating um, easily. So any teen or a middle aged you know, like uh, a student of middle school, like age 12, 14, an elder can join. Here you can find numerous uh, exhibitions, like one of them is the Teen Dreams winner. That's their, also their contest, which we took part happily and we've been recognized with our peace song. Uh, it is also shared by the global collab network on the website and the Turkish American TV. Uh, contribution of every student is um, valuable. And uh, once a month we have regular meetings and I think that today, tomorrow, we're sharing as all hubsters and all mentors in the hub. It could be a movie night, it could be a presenter, a webinar. Uh, so that's it's endless because it's been designed and created and imagined by the teens. And that's the pleasure of teaching. Um, I don't think that any student nowadays, any learner nowadays would be pleased by, you know, doing the tasks and sitting the tasks just with their notebook open and sitting side by side with somebody in the class. So mostly this is imagination of teens who produce these posters, these uh, events, they could be hybrid, uh, virtual gatherings or online, or face-to-face, -face. it does depend on your structure of their educational community. So this is um, Andlers. Um, we can invite you to, to become a hubster and even a mentor. So at the moment, I'm the mentor of their education hub and their Turkish speaking hub. Um, thank you for, yes, uh, listening to me and listening to Elia and Vera. We can stop sharing the screen now. And if you have any questions to, uh, you're welcome to ask, you're welcome.